Today, Kevin is going to be making Spaghetti De La Hood. This is from Snoop Dogg's cookbook, From Crook to Cook. So, Kevin's gonna go over everything that you're gonna need. Okay, so the first thing you need is uh, one pound of ground, they say ground sirloin. We literally cannot find ground sirloin anywhere, so we got lean ground beef. Um, you need one cup of dry Italian breadcrumbs. We just have the Walmart Great Value brand. Uh, you need a tablespoon of parsley, chopped parsley. You need a tablespoon of grated Parmesan. We just use the Kraft. You need two teaspoons of salt. That's what's here. You can't hardly see it, but you need a little bit more for salt in your water when you make your spaghetti. You need a half teaspoon of pepper, black pepper, one large egg beaten, one fourth cup of olive oil, one cup of chopped onions, four cloves of garlic. We use the already like minced garlic and you measure out it's a, each teaspoon is a, is a clove. So that's four teaspoons of the minced garlic. Um, two 28 ounce cans of whole peeled tomatoes, one teaspoon of sugar. Don't know what that's gonna do for it, but that's what it says. And one six ounce can of tomato paste. And then you need one pound of spaghetti. You can also add one bay leaf. We're not gonna, we didn't wanna buy a bay leaf just for one that recipe, so we just didn't have it. But they do say you can use a bay leaf as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do, you'll need two pots. Um, it says a Dutch oven, but just two big size pots, one for your spaghetti and one for everything else. That's what you need. So in a large bowl, got my biggest uh, bowl here, I'm gonna add my ground beef. Don't mix that plastic in there. That wouldn't be very good. And your breadcrumbs, your parsley, and your Parmesan. Salt and pepper. And your egg. <laughs> this is a lot of stuff. And I am going to use my hand. You can use a spoon if you want to, but I always just dig in with my fingers and my hands and really get it in there, um, mix it in really good. The, um, what you're gonna do is this is your meatballs. So you're gonna make this into 12 meatballs. So that's mixed in pretty good. So what we're gonna do is make, it says 12 ping pong ball size meatballs. It's been a while since I held a ping pong ball, but that's probably about right, pretty close. So I've just got a plate here. I'm just sticking them uh, on this plate. Okay, trivia question. I literally remember the last time we both held a ping pong ball. Do you? No. Think about it. Well, I know we were cleaning that room up. Um, Upstairs and had no, 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 no. The last time we held a ping pong ball was on the cruise. Oh, uh, that's right. We were picking them up. That's <laughs> they, right. On on the cruise, we took a cruise, a wonder of the sea, Royal Caribbean, and they have a ping pong ball court, and people play or ping pong. Table. Or <laughs> ping pong ball. Yeah, a table. <laughs> Not a court. Not a court. A table, and people play ping pong. Well, they get it's outside. It's kind of like it's next on to the, the walking deck. track. Yeah, it's next to the walking track. So Kevin and I would be on the walking track, walking around, and we would pass people playing ping pong. Well, it's outside, so the wind would whip. Sometimes, the, it, would sometimes it would get a hold of these ping pong balls, and we would be walking on the court, and it would. Uh, It'd be rolling down the whole thing and curving around the curve. And yes, everything. yeah, ball. curving around the the walking trail. So well, Kevin and I would pick them up. Yeah, you're and right. So, that was last time. Yeah. So now that I've got these, I'll, before I wash my hands, um, you want your big, basically a Dutch oven. We just, we don't have a Dutch oven. We just own a big pan. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna, uh, my pan is on medium heat and I'm literally just gonna lay these in the bottom and we're gonna flip these over until they're browned on the outside. So, so they're not gonna cook for a long period of time. We're just going to, um, 
basically just keep moving around, cooking for like seven or eight minutes, moving them around until they're browned on the outside. Okay, so I'm gonna take these off and put them on a paper towel. Not that they really need a paper towel, but I didn't wanna wash that plate I had rolled them on. So, so I put a paper towel on it so I wouldn't have to wash it. So basically what I'm gonna do is, you're, we're gonna take these off, they're, they're just brown. They're not cooked all the way through, but I was telling Tammy, this is really the only opportunity you have to brown them because once you start cooking them, there's no browning them. Um, it says to drain the oil off. I don't think there's enough oil in there to worry about. I'm not, I'm Absolutely just not gonna not. worry about it. Because no. I'm gonna dump, I'm gonna turn that back on medium. I'm gonna dump this whole fourth cup of olive oil in there. And I'm gonna put my onions and my garlic in there. I'm gonna let that heat up just a little bit. Uh, but I'm gonna put my onions and garlic in there and then I'm going to uh, let them brown. So basically you want the onions to to be translucent, kind of where they get clear. That's probably gonna be hot. And it shouldn't take it very long to, uh, to do. You don't want to touch that if you don't have to. Okay, you can see my garlic and my onions are cooking nicely. So now you're going to take your two cans of uh, tomatoes and just dump them in there. And you're also going to take your, your sugar and dump it in there. A big can. I don't think I've ever cooked with whole tomatoes before like this. You ever cooked anything with whole tomatoes? I before? have, but it was it was really silly because my uh, vegetable soup. Yeah. I used to buy whole tomatoes, but then I would crush yeah, them. Yeah, you have to my, crush them. Up I'd anyway. crush them in my hands. So it's yeah. like, why wouldn't I have just buy crushed tomatoes? Crushed. Yeah. Well, this you want to turn this down to low now, and you want just like it is, the, the, adding the tomatoes and the sugar. Um, you want to turn it down to low and let it simmer for um, 30 minutes. That's And cover it. Cover it and let it simmer for 30 minutes. That's what we're going to do. Okay, we've been simmering for half an hour. So what I want to do, I'm actually going to do this first. We're going to take our tomato paste and I'm going to just put it in here. Stir this up real quick. Uh, one thing you can do when this, when it gets to this point, we've got basically half an hour left. So you're going to basically prepare your spaghetti according to the package directions. So our package says to uh, boil your water, and then once you get the boiling water, put the spaghetti in and let it cook for like 10 minutes. So basically, make your spaghetti whatever way you you make your spaghetti. Um, that's how we're going to do it. So we start our, our water over there to start boiling. All right, so my paste is stirred in really good. Now you want to put your meatballs in. I'm going to put them in one at a time just so I don't splatter. And I'm going to give it a good stir again. And then we're going to leave this again on low heat. And we're going to let it simmer for um, another 30 minutes. But like I said, while that's going, make your spaghetti according to your package directions. You just go and make sure these meatballs are really good and covered. Okay, my water's, my water's boiling for my spaghetti. I'm just gonna literally dump it in. Um, one thing I didn't mention about the spaghetti is um, I salted my water. That didn't work as well as I thought. Um, I did salt my water, so it is a, a little bit salty. So I like to season my water. Um, I didn't break the spaghetti. Normally I would take the spaghetti and break it into smaller pieces. It didn't say to do that, so I'm just gonna leave it just as a whole pieces. But ours says to, to cook it for like 10 to 11 minutes. Um, it, the cookbook says to actually cook it one minute less. So I may go for just 10 minutes and then I'll be back. Okay, my spaghetti is ready. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my heat off and I'm gonna drain this in a colander and then I'm just gonna put the spaghetti back in the pot and then I have to wait to finish up the sauce uh, when the time's up for that. It's almost done. Okay, right, this has been simmering for 30 minutes. So I've just taken it off the heat. Steam. Take your lid off. Be careful, it's really hot. Now I'm gonna take my noodles and I'm gonna put it in my sauce. You wanna switch these sides? There's still tomatoes in there though, the whole tomatoes. So I don't know if they're gonna, hopefully they'll 
break up a little bit. So this is just my spaghetti noodles drained in, in a strainer, a colander. And I'm just gonna stir this up really good and get the spaghetti good and coated. As I'm stirring in these tomato, the, the pasta, I'm also taking my, my spoon and just breaking up those tomatoes a little bit. I don't mind them being in like hunks like like that. That's that's not bad. So what I'm doing is just making sure I'm breaking them up a little bit. Don't break your um, meatballs up though. <laughs> the good thing is the tomatoes are really good and soft. So they do um, break up pretty decently. I think I would get crushed tomatoes next time though. So they're already taken care of. Dig this. We make spaghetti and meatballs a little different in the hood. Some of y'all like to prepare the pasta carefully, pour over the sauce, and craft a few huge meatballs to throw on top. We ain't got time for all that. Just throw everything in the pot and taste how good it is when you mix it all together. From NYC to the LBC, if you're in the hood, that's how we make it. Sprinkle a little cheese on top and you're good to go. So says Chef Boyard Dog. <laughs> uh, this makes, it says it serves four. Yeah, so you would have three meatballs each. And you can serve it with garlic bread if you mm -hmm. want. Yeah. And we do have some of that Parmesan cheese, cheese. you can add if yes. you want to. I want to try it without though. I know. And you know what though, a lot, a lot of, um, if you talk to a lot of people that do it, like I've I watched Italian people on Food Network and stuff make pasta. Mm -hmm. um, they make, usually they make their sauce and everything um, together in one pot. They don't like do separate things. So. Right. I'm definitely not an expert at no. getting the pasta. Um, and really, like I said, normally I would break the pasta up. I just did one for this recipe because it didn't say to, but normally I would break the pasta in two so they're smaller pieces. Mm, I like the meatball. Mm. I don't think, I don't think I've ever had spaghetti where I've made my own sauce. Mm -mm. Like I've always bought a can of ragu or prego. Now the question is, do you think it was worth it, uh, flavor-wise? I think it has a really nice flavor. I think it does too. I don't think it necessarily tastes any better though than the stuff you can buy out of the jar. Mm. It's more, it's more sweet and tomatoey. Mm-hmm. Those meatballs have a really nice flavor. Mm -hmm. Um, the texture is perfect. They're well, they're very well cooked. They're, um, they seem a little dense. They're kind of dense, but, but most meatballs are. Right, but I like them quite a bit. And the pasta, um, I think normally when we cook our pasta, it's a little softer. Uh, see, I like it like this. But uh, no, I, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. I think ours is a, usually a little softer, but I do like this quite a bit. Yeah, I've always liked a little firmer pasta. The thing that I would change about this recipe is I would buy crushed tomatoes because mm -hmm. the picture in the cookbook doesn't have whole tomatoes. And if, yeah, Kevin, really even show them, really. if Kevin hadn't crushed them up while he was stirring it, they would have still been whole. Mm -hmm. Big hunks. So I think um, definitely get crushed tomatoes or if you buy whole, then when you're stirring it in, make sure you crush them. Because really there's just no point, I don't think, of having whole tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I like it with a little grated Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. It just adds a little bit of extra mm. um, cheese okay. flavor. I mean, you don't really taste it a lot. Yeah, like here's a here's a big hunk of tomato that I left in there. 
And that, that's not bad. I mean, it's no, it was good. I just had some. Um, it adds a lot of flavor to it, but the crushed tomato is going to be there too. Right. Um, you're still going to have pieces. You're still going to have those hunks of tomato. Yeah, you're still going to have hunks of tomato. I love these, uh, the meatballs though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have two things I would do different. Mm. Love that. Mm -hmm. Some cheese is nice enough. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't want to get the grated, you could get the shredded. If you wanted a little cheesier cheese, you could get the shredded kind. Um, I would do what you said, buy the um, crushed tomatoes instead of the whole tomatoes, because I think it's got just as much um, liquid in there, tomato, -y paint, uh, tomato flavor as the whole ones do, except you don't have to worry about crushing them up in, while you're stirring it. So I think that would be one thing I do. Mm -hmm. The second thing I would do is I would break my spaghetti in half mm -hmm. to where it's just shorter pieces. It doesn't hurt anything or do anything bad or whatever. It's just a little bit easier to eat mm -hmm. um, when you're doing it that way. But I would I would make this again. I don't like I said I don't know that this is necessarily better or worse than um, a can or a jar of tomato sauce. Uh, so you could just as easily make the meatballs and use your own. Um, jarred sauce i was gonna to. say that if you want to go by uh, snoop's recipe for the meatballs you could totally do that and still use a jar of prego mm -hmm. um, it would actually have more like seasoning in it it would have more seasoning in it and you wouldn't have all that wait time so if you wanted to do it quicker because honestly that's where you're having to wait is when it comes to the sauce yeah so if you were to just use a jar of whatever your favorite you know i know people are real picky about yeah, spaghetti you sauce. heat that up on the stove yes and, and use his recipe for the meatballs because that's a really good meatball recipe so i like this it, it works mm -hmm. for us yeah it's really nice so um, this cookbook has been a lot of fun. I think this is like the third recipe I've made out of here. Well, I think you marked them at the top. Uh, no, those are ones I've... Oh, uh, still to I've, go. Still, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Possibles no, to go. Possible, yeah. But no, I've made, I've made several things. So if you do a search on my channel, uh, Tammy Dunn, uh, just do Snoop Dogg. And uh, everything will come up that we've tried from Snoop Dogg. I know, because uh, like we've tried his cereals and stuff ice like creams. that. So that'll come up too. Yeah, the ice creams. Um, so uh, yeah, the Dr. Bombay, uh, those will come up too. But uh, so will the recipes we've done from this cookbook. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would, yeah, I, I have no complaints about this mm -hmm. at all. No, I would make this too. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.